NBC is marking Black History Month with a series on the daughters of civil rights leaders. And we begin tonight with Santita Jackson. She is the daughter of the Reverend Jesse Jackson, who is the founder of Rainbow Push, a Chicago-based nonprofit and a former presidential candidate. Newsy's Lauren Magarino has more on what she's learned from her dad and how it's impacted her life. I'm Sam Peter Jackson coming to you from WCPT radio host. Let's start with our hot topic of the day. TV host. Politics is about power. Political pundit. And trained singer. Santina Jackson is a Renaissance woman. I've always been a voracious reader, student of history, a student of current events whose most influential classroom happened to be at home, with civil rights leader and politician, Reverend Jesse Jackson, under the same roof. Quite honestly, the greatest teacher I've ever had has been my father. You know, Reverend Jackson has been in the most hostile settings with political allies and political foes. It was just part of the job as a member of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s inner circle, and it was dangerous. Well, you pick up the phone, and hi, little girl, hi. Is your father home? No, he's not. He was wearing a trench coat this morning. Yes, sir. Well, you know, just you should call him at the office, because if he comes home, I'm going to blow his effing head off. Okay. But it was in these hostile spaces that she learned how the art of conversation can drive the civil rights movement forward. Everybody, let's talk about uh, Ahmaud Arbery. What is going on with that case? The Santita Jackson Show, broadcast from Chicago on the nation's largest progressive talk radio station, is her latest vehicle to do so. Are you trying to move the needle? I'm trying to do the best that I can. And you do that one person at a time. Uh, what I hope to bring to the conversation is illumination. Americans have a heritage of the vote no other nation on earth can match. Starting with the value, she says, has been forgotten. We're not teaching civics anymore. And with the loss of civics, you've lost civility. According to a 2016 survey by the Annenberg Public Policy Center, one in four Americans can't name the three branches of government. And we've got to grow up in our politics and grow the movement forward. Because I think that um, people are beginning to see that, um, that we've all been slighted. Another point she sheds light on. We're the canaries in the mind. And I think that the civil rights movement, I hope, has helped America to see that that the most vulnerable populations, whether it's black people or indigenous people, whether it's women, whoever it is, but particularly black people, because we're the readily identifiable other in America. That it's me today, it's you tomorrow. We're the canaries in the mine. We let you know where things are going. I want to hear what you have to say. Could you call tomorrow morning? They're not going to really like me, though. No, no, that's okay. No, no, no. We're, we're very open here. The key is people have to be open enough to listen. I don't have to agree with you, but I will always respect you and you have a platform here, okay? I think that's what's missing from our conversations today. Uh, the sense of acknowledgement, the sense of respect, uh, the sense of empathy and sympathy. So cancel culture is a non-starter. Cancel culture, cancel culture, I mean, come on. You don't need to do that. People are growing. Give them the space to grow. Instead, she calls on a lesson her father taught her. One of the first things that he told me was that we don't have enemies. You have foes. You have someone with whom you have a disagreement. He said, but never let someone be your enemy. Which took me to something that he told me years ago. No man is your friend. No man is your enemy. Every man is your teacher. Lauren Magarino, Newsy, Chicago.